Hello, hello, hello. I don't know if you've heard of this album. <laughs> Have you heard of it? Have you heard of Dark Side of the Moon, a Dark Side of the Moon by The Pink Floyd? Have you heard of it? Well, this year, just holding out for illustrative purposes, this year, uh, it's the 50th anniversary, and so there's been a box set, and then they broke everything out of it, and I've, I think I've re reviewed most of the elements of it. I haven't done the book, but uh, books. But they broke out the surround sound disc and the vinyl because it's the 50th, 50th. Remember, 50th, very important. And so that means we get to uh, remaster and rejigger it again. Again, it's not remixed; it's just remastered, which means that they just do another kind of, well, another master and the pressing of it really. Um, yeah, and so I'm going to talk about this first. This is the Blu-ray. But for those of you who don't know, I'm one commentator. So why, why, why would you release music on Blu-ray? And it's like he's he'd been asleep for the last 20 odd years. Um, music has been released on Blu-ray and DVD. Well, DVD first, then Blu-ray. Or oh, SACD. Don't forget SACD. So that can accommodate surround sound formats what's surround sound <laughs> again i'm going to talk to you like you don't know because there are people out there that are a bit thick it's just the way it goes i can't help it but surround sound is um is a a type of audio which uses more than one more than one more than two speakers because mono is one two is stereo and surround sound can use 5.1, 7.1, 9.1 speaker systems. That's where you have multiple speakers around and a special amp, and that's what this comes. That's what this is for. Um, and now there's also Atmos. Now I don't have an Atmos system because I've got a 7.1 surround sound system, and I don't feel the need to upgrade. So, you know, I was thinking about it, and then I thought about it, and then I looked at the prices, and I thought, eh, until my system blows up, then, and even then, I'll probably just get another. 7.1 system so yeah that's what this is this is like it's got atmos it's got your 5.1 it's got your it's got your stereo mix and it's on a blu-ray so you need a blu-ray player to play it so don't don't buy this and put it in your cd player because it ain't gonna work um so what did i think of this well seeing as i didn't listen to the atmos i don't know <laughs> and i don't care <laughs> Um, but you do have the 5.1 surround sound mix now. Again, I don't know. It doesn't say it's been remastered. It just says it just says 5.1 surround sound mix. Whereas it does say remastered stereo mix. So this is new. This isn't new, and that's new. I think that's how it works. Again, I uh, I don't know. I'm sure someone will correct me. Because frankly. I'm worn out by all these reissues. Um, again, the 5.1 surround sound mix was reissued back, back in the was it was it the 20th anniversary? Whoops, there got my headphones. Um, where are I? This one. This one. This one. This is when it was first out on surround sound, and this is on SACD, and it's so small I, I can't see when it was published <laughs> I can't see but I think it was the 20th anniversary or no not no 30th anniversary no, 70 80, 90 yeah it would, this must have been the 30th anniversary I think or 25th uh, anyway surround sound 5.1 and I think that's what's on here so you've, if you've got that and you've got a SSA CD player you don't necessarily need that um, but yeah, the, the bonus of this is it was it's relatively cheap. It's about fifteen quid, I believe, and you get all the stuff on one disc and some stickers and whatnot. So if you like the surround sounds and you haven't got that, or you, or maybe your SACD player's futzed or whatever, and you've got a Blu-ray player, then this is the obvious choice. This represents good value, you know, if you like surround sound. And if you, I don't know, maybe you've got an Atmos system, you know, you've got that too. So, good value. But, 
again, for me, not necessarily good value because I've already got that and I don't really care about that. So you see where I'm going with this. Oh, but Darren, you should review the... I don't care, but no one cares about Atmos. The only people who care about Atmos is the record companies because they foisted a new system upon us when 5.1 and 7.1 or whatever you want to call it is perfectly serviceable. And our Atmos is, is, again, it's a very strange thing. There are many videos on the YouTube, go look it up, where people in the in the, in the the music biz who, who uh, remix this stuff talk about how Atmos has been forced upon them. <laughs> and then they've had to upgrade their studios and there's no money in it because it's an incredibly niche, incredibly niche um, sound format. The same as sur original surround sound was very niche, very niche. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for all things surround sound and you want the physical, because I think you can stream these in Atmos on Apple and I think Tidal and things like that. But don't hold me to that because you know me, I don't do any research. I just come in here and talk because eh, research is for pussies. I just, I, just, I just can't. This is all landfill, isn't it? It's all landfill. And then we come on to this. This is the 50th anniversary um, pressing of the of the stereo. And I listened to it. And I must admit, I wasn't that impressed compared to the... Was it the 2016 one? I can't remember. <laughs> when was it? Was it 2016? It wasn't 2011, was it? But anyway, my previous pressing of this, I mean, you, again, if you've got that, you don't need this. And again, there's nothing on it to say other than other than that there to tell you that it's the 50th anniversary. It's not like they did different artwork or different stickers or whatnot, you know. So, again, they didn't really make a, a big fuss out of it. It would have been it would have been made it would have made more sense if they'd have. You know, reissued this and the live album in a double album sort of thing with different sleeve artwork and a, a bigger booklet and then it would have been more commemorative if you know what I mean ping I'm not interested in other people's other people's crap eBay okay, I get notifications to my watch I'll figure out how to turn them off one day um, that's when you hear a ping so yeah, my advice. What is my advice? As you live vicariously through me, don't don't be me. Don't be me and waste your money on Pink Floyd reissues. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I was really underwhelmed by the the vinyl pressing, to be honest. And I thought uh, it was a I thought it was a bit, and I, I thought it was a bit dull actually. I mean, it's all it's all right, but you know when you when they bring out a new remastered version, you expect some sort of shine or some shimmy, you know, something to uh, to lift it above the previous version. And there was nothing. And like I said, it felt a bit deader than the previous one that I had. And I did a little AB thing, and I did that with the um, with the SACD and uh, the five point one. I did a little, and I, I thought the SACD had a little bit more oomph to it, you know. And then you start getting obsessed, don't you? You start doing A B comparisons, and you, then you then you you check yourself, and you go, "What kind of wanker have I become?" Here I am doing A B tests on media that dead media, S A C D for Christ's sake, you know, vinyl, dead media. No one, no one listens to vinyl, isn't it? The, the hipsters just buy the vinyl to stick on their wall. They don't listen to it. Um, so there I was doing A B comparisons, thinking, "Oh God, please, may my life end now." I've turned into one of those wankers, and that that that, that just depressed me. I got I got incredibly depressed. <laughs> um, but it made me realise that there'll probably be another one out soon. They'll probably reissue it again and again and again, and it never ends. It's never going to stop. Um, but yeah, so what's my advice? My advice is to I don't know pick it up on D on CD second hand for one ninety nine, because CD is the cheapest format at the moment, especially second hand. <laughs> That's all I can come up with. Um, 
I mean, out of this whole, I'm now I'm going to talk broadly about the whole 50th anniversary thing. Yeah, it would have been nice if there was a complete, an utter remix of the album. Not a redux, a remix. We never need a redux, but if they'd have remixed the album and actually, I don't know, mixed Roger Waters out of it. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine, <laughs> Imagine if they go, no, we're going to remix, remix it and remove Roger Waters out of it. Oh, no, we're leaving the bass in because Dave played that anyway. <laughs> I'd have I'd have paid I'd have paid to I'd have paid for that one, um, but yeah, you kind of come away from this whole like fiftieth anniversary thing. Really, only the live the live album is like the first. It's a first, isn't it? Really, even though that's available in various bootleg circles in more complete forms, um, that live album is truly the only new thing that came out and the book. But nobody cares about books, do they? We're for the um, for the product. We're for the the music product. That's the only really thing that's come out of the whole fiftieth anniversary. And that's a real missed opportunity, I think. Again, the whole box set thing was, and I've mentioned it before. I thought was a complete. Well, it was boring, wasn't it? It was boring. And this is boring. This video is boring. I'm boring. Let's all be boring together. So yeah, what can what conclusions can we draw? It's all a big con, isn't it? Really. I think that's that's the conclusion we can draw from all this. Um, I think the 50th anniversary of Pink Floyd was a missed opportunity. I think they could have done more with it. I think that, you know, in terms of these reissues, there are many ways of presenting it. The box set was expensive and really only for silly people. And if you bought it and enjoyed it, that's fine. I'm not having a direct dig. I think you, you've got to be a bit silly, you know, to spend what is it, over 200 quid on, on an album and a live album, you know, you know, it's, there wasn't a lot of content there, and especially if you if you break down, you know, the breakouts. If you pick up the vinyl, the live album, the Blu-ray, and the book, I think you can do it for under a hundred quid, which is half the price. You know, and crikey, you could probably put it in a carrier bag or something and write Pink Floyd on it, and it'll still be the same. So yeah, I think I think it's that's the real the real big shame of it, and at least um, I I've never thought I'd say this, but at least Roger tried to do something different. You know, the way he went about it was wrong, and the way he kept saying, "Oh, but I wrote I wrote Dark Side of the Moon. It was all me." The way he presented it, you know, presented himself, you know, um, I don't think really helped. But at least he tried to do something different, and it was wrong. But at least he tried. <laughs> There, were, like I said, there were ways. I don't know if you watched any other videos, but I said he would have been better off doing the album in his style live, and then releasing that in a box with the studio album, and then you know it would have been a celebration of the record rather than it be him trying to prove that it was all his idea and you didn't get it the first time round. And so I'm going to make you listen to it again, really slowly, and you know, and all the dynamics are going to be gone. And all the instrumental passages could be ruined with poetry. And you'll never listen to it again. <laughs> but at least he tried. Whereas Pink Floyd didn't try. Um, so yeah, that's that's me wittering on. I don't know if this is a review. I don't even know what this is. What, what am I saying? Don't buy any of it. Don't buy any of it. Don't. Just teach him a lesson. It's too late now. We've all bought it, haven't we? And I only bought it because I knew I'd get some views. Because, you know. Me and Pink Floyd, I am Mr. Pink Floyd, aren't I, for some reason, or thanks to the YouTube algorithm. Thanks, YouTube algorithm. I do talk about other things. I do. I do, I do, I do. And for those of you who reached the end of this, well done. I didn't think I'd reached the end either. But um, that was it. I suppose this is, is this a prog review? <laughs> I don't know what, it's just a whinge, isn't it, really? It's whinge. Prog whinge. Um, but yeah, there is absolutely no reason to buy these sets unless you want this. I mean, this is, I mean, for 15 quid, you can't, you know, and if you haven't got this in any other, like, surround sale format, or maybe, like I said, your SACD's busted, this is good value. Um, though, it's kind of an optical illusion with those dots, and it? it makes my eyeballs go weird. Um, so yeah, but as for the vinyl, I don't know if you can pick up the previous one cheaper. There's no difference. All you're getting is a different catalogue number. 
You know, there's nothing in there to mark it out as being something unique. And that's a shame. They should have put on a booklet in there or posters, more posters, more stickers, more booklets. You know, more, not exactly the same, just slightly tweaked. And that, I think, is the review. That, I think I've said enough and I've probably witted on too long and I'm ever so sorry. I apologise for my wittering. Thank you for watching. My name is Darren Lock. I've been talking about of a little known album, an album that I don't think any of you have ever heard by a band that nobody really cares about called The Pink Floyd. And it's called The Dark Side of the Moon. And it was the 50th anniversary of it this year. And it has been reissued to death. I don't think they can reissue it anymore, but they will. Well, I won't be here for the 100th anniversary, but I don't know if any of you will be either. But I don't know, maybe my ancestors will carry on the tradition. <laughs> Imagine that. The channel's still going. <laughs> and my my great great grandchild is as as reviewing the hundred and fiftieth anniversary. <laughs> Just imagine, and nothing's changed except it beams straight into your brain. Anyway, sorry, I've just I've gone off. I've gone off on one. Thanks again for watching. That was prog review. <laughs> prog on. <laughs>